Redot. Where did it come from? How did it come to be? And why does it matter? Since you're here, I reckon you've heard about Redot from somewhere already. Chances are you've bumped into the name on social media, or seen someone mention it on Discord. Maybe you've caught wind of the drama that led to its emergence. A post on Twitter stirred some controversy, and poof, Godot has now been forked. You might be wondering, what exactly happened? Why would anyone get so upset with a stupid little post to spend countless hours of their lives forking a game engine? As often is the case, reality is more complex than it appears. To understand the full story, we need to roll back a little further. Well, not that far. Some time ago, the Unity game engine caused an uproar with a decision that sent shockwaves through the game development industry. Out of the blue, Unity announced a runtime fee that would apply retroactively, charging developers each time someone installed a game made with Unity over a certain threshold. To add insult to injury, reinstalls would be actively counted and charged for as well. Suddenly, developers were faced with a reality in which certain game projects would no longer be feasible, with others forced to monetize their users in ways similar to the mobile game industry. Suddenly, your game project was no longer your own. This change sparked widespread backlash, prompting many developers to call Unity out or leave the engine altogether. Many of them migrated to Godot, attracted by its C-sharp support, a simple learning curve, and, well, the fact that it was open source and free. Unlike Unity, Godot felt like a welcoming home, a reliable haven, a port to call your own, embodying the inclusive spirit of open source development. After all, everyone is welcome in FOSS, aren't they? Fast forward four months ago, when Godot decided to answer that question in a rather spectacular fashion. For some time now, Godot's Discord policies were criticized for being exclusionary, with some users shunned for stating non-inflammatory opinions or asking innocuous questions, and a reviled practice of establishing safe spaces, Discord channels available only to people of a specific origin or skin tone. Little did those critics know that things were about to get even worse on Godot's social media. In response to a rather idiotic claim that game engines are woke and only woke people use them, Godot's social media manager responded by asking people to show off their woke games. Her term, not ours. Using a hashtag that named the controversy that followed, pound wokeot. Because, woke Godot, get it? That's how they declared themselves. To many, indeed, the post felt like a political declaration, made in the name of not just Godot's core personnel, but also its maintainers, participants, and community members. Godot had a preferred political position now, this open source engine, strung together from the work of countless contributors, now had a political identity. This led to a huge firestorm, sparking waves of responses and questions, with users demanding the team focus on the engine and fix bugs instead of playing politics. The situation quickly escalated as more and more users found themselves blocked on X or banned from Godot's Discord server, unable to access the community they were once a part of, officially shunned. Access denied. Some were even barred from Godot's GitHub repository, losing access to the engine code. Social media flooded with people showcasing the posts they were banned for, some as innocent as suggesting that this might not be the best move for a game engine, especially one developed by and used by people of varying ideological backgrounds and political perspectives, often from outside the United States who weren't interested in its political discourse. One after another, anyone voicing dissatisfaction risked getting banned, with some Godot users cheering the mods on weeding out the undesirables. The trust between Godot's team and a big chunk of its users was shattered. And when the Godot Foundation weighed in, de facto supporting the social team's actions, it evaporated completely. How could one trust one's future in the hands of an organization ready to ban them for a simple disagreement? Why would you spend hundreds upon hundreds of hours learning how to operate a platform that you might one day not have full access to? Simply because you fail a purity test, simply because your politics might not match up with those Wokot now declared mandatory. Value inspection. Please stand still while the purity test is administered. This became the catalyst for our fork, for Redot to be born. Despite claims of some, we were always driven by the vision of a truly inclusive community, one allowing for the diversity of thought, one where developers wouldn't face exclusion or bans for their personal beliefs. 
One not just interested in becoming the polar opposite of Godot's politics, but opposite to the act of politicization itself. Even as Redot developers and community members are still political, still hold and present their views on many topics, the engine itself is not, and you will not be barred access simply because we disagree. We wanted to create a space focused purely on making games, because in the end, the act of make game is in itself the most inclusive activity of all. The other reason why Redot came to being is much more subtle but equally important. Over the years, we've observed Godot drifting away from being truly community-driven. They still claim to be, of course, but their actions suggest otherwise. Over 3,000 of community PRs remain unaddressed on GitHub, while corporate interests appear to have a growing influence over feature development and bug fixes. These two factors, the community management issues and the palpable shift away from community-driven development, convinced us that a fork wasn't just a good idea, it was necessary. If we wanted to continue working with the engine we already learned to love, we would have to do so elsewhere. After all, we were already told we were not welcome. We were told that if we failed the purity test, we don't belong. We felt that we could offer, at the very least, an alternative community, one in which users can continue using the engine they love without the fear of being ostracized. A community which can provide them with additional bug fixes and features, but most importantly, with a truly inclusive space, one where your politics, sexual orientation, or social status are irrelevant and forever will be. You won't find exclusionary channels in our Discord. We don't require you to bow to a politicized code of conduct to be able to contribute. We will always allow you to have your own opinions, even if they differ wildly from that of the members of our core team, which, by the way, by itself consists of people of different creeds and walks of life. We want your games to be yours, in a way that only you can define. Your game, your rules, now and forever. So go and make that game.